let's not act like Michigan State hasn't gone to CBUS and gotten ball kicked. Do you remember two years ago? We didn't score. Do you remember last year? I mean, it, it was, we, we didn't score. Offense is better. Yeah, so is OSU's defense. I, I have such a hard time making a case for MSU, but look, you make it. You make it. I'm not betting this. I'm going to watch it with friends at a Spartan bar in New York. I'm not messing with this. I'm just going to enjoy it, and when it ceases to be entertaining, I'll leave the bar. Like, we're not going to sit there and watch them get crushed. I hope they go down and win. I just don't know how to do it. Dude. But am I crazy looking at Michigan and going, that has to be the one that has better odds. Even though Iowa is kind of like welfare Wisconsin, and they could expose these these cracks in Michigan's foundation, I still look at it like the odds so that, that Michigan can get the job done against Rome. that number are better than the odds MSU can get it done against theirs. That's all this is about. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Gentlemen, join the conversation. Yeah, and you're right, all jokes aside, I, I, yesterday it was, I went on my Instagram, went to the message request, and I had, I'm not saying it was dozens, but I had three separate DMs from dudes saying, hey, Sully, love your guys' show, I just, I just want to want to tell you, I think Mike's being a little too hard on MSU, I think MSU's definitely going to keep it within 20 points, but look, I, I don't think, I, I don't, I can't guarantee or think that MSU is going to keep it within 20 points because you know what Ohio State all year and we've talked about this extensively on cash the ticket Ohio State has just been running over teams so sure do you know I understand people saying that yeah I could see MSU doing what they do and keeping it close but guys it's not years past this year the way OSU looks I I can't confidently say that MSU is going to keep it close that's why I would say Michigan is the easier bet of the two I feel more confident in Michigan. I think that, as I said yesterday on the show, this reminds me of the Wisconsin game last year, Michigan against Wisconsin. Wisconsin ranked a little too high. Michigan beat them soundly. I think Michigan should beat Iowa pretty soundly. Now, if they don't, if they, God forbid, lose this game, then my God, there's, I can't, all hell breaks loose. But I think that Michigan winning by a touchdown, covering the three and a half, I do think that's more realistic than, than even Michigan State keeping it within 20 points. And I've gotten burned a couple times this year betting on MSU. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not allowed to go against LSU. They're running rough shot. Um, I think betting on your own team is dangerous. Your emotion is involved. I just want to know where people are at. If you're creeping into Sully's DMs, uh, like chicks with rappers, well then, I need to hear from you. Tell me why I'm wrong for expecting the worst this week. I just think sometimes you watch Team A and watch Team B, and it's not at Spartan Stadium. It's 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 not just on the road. Dude, you're going to OSU at night. It's a blackout. This is the worst-case scenario. You'd be better off playing this game on the moon against space aliens than you are going to Columbus at night in a blackout. That's like a Penn State whiteout. That's the worst case scenario for the traveling team. And it's an Ohio State team that, frankly, I don't know that people have woken up to just how good they might be. I mean, right now, like, if, if, if I had a neutral field and I could play a pickup game between Ohio State and Alabama, I'd take Ohio State. That's how I feel. Like, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's an illusion. With Iowa, I don't think they're for real. Like, Iowa has played Miami, Ohio, Middle Tennessee State, Rutgers, and then ISU. Now, ISU, their offense stinks. And it was an 18-17 game. It's not like Iowa's offense is good. And it's not like Iowa's defense has really been tested. I think it's easier for me to believe that Ohio State's great than it is Michigan just stinks. Like, if Michigan loses this game, they stink. This is supposed to be back against the wall, defend the den, everyone's got the knives out, it's us against everybody. And you're bringing in, let's face it, guys, if I, if I made you pick the softest team 
Like the team you think might be most overranked in the top 20, wouldn't Iowa kind of jump out at you? You should beat this team. Or maybe you believe State's got better odds getting 20. I'd love to know. And how can you possibly, and, I, and not you personally, you in general, well, blame me for everything. That's what's yeah. part of the Well, and I'm sure I, I want you to answer this question. How can how can anyone be confident that Michigan State's offense is all of a sudden going to gel and click, and they're going to go down to Columbus and put up 30 points, 25 points, whatever? I, I, I don't think right now with the way they've been playing, anyone can be that confident. So what, you're just, again, relying on Michigan State's defense to be absolutely elite, absolutely exceptional, and keep OSU within 20 points? It's, it just seems super tough. Well, the other thing, too, I mean, you're talking about MSU and their fourth left tackle of the year going down and facing maybe the best college defensive end since... I gotta be honest with you, I think Chase Young is better than Bosa. He's the best since Miles Garrett or Joey Bosa. That's how good he is as a DN. Chase Young is unreal. He's better than Nick Bosa. At a minimum, he's on par with Joey. But I think he's better because to me, he's the perfect balance of run, run D, edge setting, size and brute strength to go with the technique and being the edge rusher. I mean, Chase Young's unreal. Unreal. Oh, yeah, David's trying to do swim moves back there while screening calls. Hey, it's unreal. I'm sorry. I'm, but, but I've seen mile, Vic, I mean, the hand, the speed. Oh, my God. Let me, I know people need a cute question sometimes, Mike. Uh, let me know. Let, let me bottom line it this way, guys. I want to just paint a picture. You have a hundred, a crisp hundred dollar bill in your hand right now. It's just sitting there and you're not allowed to spend it on anything. You're not allowed to do anything but place it on one of these two bets. Are you choosing Michigan State plus 20 and a half or are you choosing Michigan minus three and a half? It can't be any simpler than that. I'm choosing to go to homecoming at Army and <laughs> pretend that this game's not happening. Everyone has to pick a side here. Well, I'm excited. I got a big football trip weekend planned. I'm pumped up. Army homecoming, I'm dressing as Ben Franklin, I'm leading the homecoming Hi. parade. I may shoot a cannon. I like it. I'm pumped up. Then I got to I, I, listen, I never thought I'd be excited about going to Giants and Vikings, but at least with a little Danny Dimes, why not? What, what do you want to bet this is the reckoning? What do you want to bet this is the game? He completes like 30% of his passes, throws three picks, you know. Harrison Smith rips his head off, like, <laughs> punts it into the crowd. Oh, come on. He's a stud. <laughs> I don't say that. Paulson's audio video, game change. And there's sale coming up here on Columbus Day weekend, October 10th through the 14th. Unbeatable. You stop in, save on TVs, speakers, whole home audio, even theater seating, whatever it is. They got it all. Their showroom is the best. And you'll find the entire store on sale, including amazing deals, like the LG 4K TVs starting at $329. But it gets even better. They're offering financing. They're going to hand you some free money, a little no-interest parlay. All right. Maybe you're like Sully, just bought a new crib. Guy's been sitting on a bean bag. He's got no chairs, but he's got himself a 4K TV. It's all that matters. Go to Paulson's Audio Video. You don't remember anything I've ever told you. Remember Paulson. Their prices are always the same or less than Costco, Amazon Prime, or Best Buy. They're going to show you the prices in the store so you know you're not getting taken to the cleaners. Check it out. PaulsonsAV.com. That's PaulsonsAV.com. Time for another Action Network Flash. Tonight, Seattle hosts Los Angeles, and the home team is a one-and-a-half-point favorite. But sharp bettors are favoring the total, with over 70% of the money on the over 49. For more betting info, download the free Action Network app today. CBS Tonight has all new comedy, starting with a new young show. I love it. Then, critics call the unicorn the must-watch comedy of the fall. When I was young, you would just go to a cake party at somebody's farm. You would meet a girl. Next thing you know, you're a thing. Did you grow up in a John Cougar Mellencamp song? A new episode of The Unicorn. And after a new mom, Patricia Heaton, Kyle MacLachlan, and Ashley Tisdale star in Carol's second act. When I tell people my mom became a doctor in her old late middle, late middle age. Carol's second act. New tonight. CBS Tonight, there's one new drama dozens of critics have two words for. Must watch. Wow. They're calling evil, masterful, and the best thing out there this season. 
starting at 8 on CBS 62 Detroit. Then stay tuned for first forecast at 11. So you open up the cabinet door and the handle just comes off in your hand, which makes you think, those cabinets gotta go. Life is full of challenges. Good thing there's a full-service bank to help you make the most of each. From mobile wallets to home equity loan advisors, at Comerica, every account comes with the tools, knowledge, and one-on-one -on -one support you need every step of the way. That's full-service banking, only at Comerica Bank. Raising expectations since 1849. Learn more at Comerica.com. Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. NMLS ID 480990. They say you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so here at Charmin, we decided to sing about it. for Skechers slip-on footwear. Now that I've hung up the cleats, I like to wear a more comfortable shoe. In fact, I like to wear the most comfortable shoe. Skechers slip-ons. Skechers slip-ons are simply the best. For one thing, there's no laces, so they just slip right on. Then there's the Skechers air-cooled memory foam. It cradles your feet and provides unbelievable comfort that lasts all day long. Skechers slip-ons are the most comfortable, easy-to-wear shoes I've ever worn. Try Skechers slip-ons with air-cooled memory foam today. Skechers. Comfort included. Saturday morning starting at 10. 97 won the tickets Pat Caputo and Dan Leach. Broadcast live from AAA Ann Arbor, Main Street, across from Michigan State. The first 500 fans that stop by get a 97 won the ticket tailgate shirt. The ticket chicks will be there too. Get more at 97 won the ticket.com. Do you have an opinion? Of course you do. Call the D Las Vegas 97 won the ticket studio line at 248 539 9797. The D Las Vegas. The home of Detroit sports in Vegas. struggling with Iowa to now it should be an easier win. Well, hold on. Struggling and a four-point win. Would you say you struggled with someone? I'm not calling for Michigan to win easily or win by more than a score. You struggle with someone if you only beat them by four or six or seven. Nothing's changed. What's changed is the context that we're talking about. Sully's asking me a question that forces me to choose the easier option. I still believe that Michigan beating Iowa by four is more plausible than State staying within three touchdowns. That's because I feel like I'm looking at the monster in Ohio State. I don't really think it has much to do with Michigan State. Why do you think I said yesterday, MSU has a three-week season? If they win two of the next three, they're for real, and they're, they're, they're pretty decent. But if they lose two of the next three, or heaven help them all three, they're no good. It's not fair. To, like, it's not fair to D'Antonio to go, oh, well, if they don't beat OSU, he's terrible. No, no, no. I don't know that any team's going there tomorrow night and beating them. That's how I feel. The same argument you're making for Iowa being suspect is the one you should be making for OSU. They've beaten teams that won't be above 500. They're frauds. Only their D-line is elite. You guys are overzealous. Well, I disagree. I mean, for example, is Cincinnati a fraud and a team that won't make a bowl? They're four-point underdogs to Central Florida. Four. Not 14. Four. And Nebraska... While I agree with you that they are certainly not as sexy as people said, even if they're just a bowl team at 6-6, six and six, understand something. OSU going on the road and doing to them what they did? I, sorry, short of playing Rice and doing it, I'll be impressed. I'd take Michigan. 
over Iowa, over MSU, even coming close. I take Michigan State. Iowa hasn't thrown an interception. They don't turn the ball over. Um, yes, that's fair. It's fair. They play responsible. And their, their front is good. Both sides of the ball, their front is good. At, at, a, at worst, I think that they are a sneaky push on the offensive line with you. And I would take their front defensively over you. Here's the difference. I really just don't know if their secondary is going to be able to match up and hold their water against your big play receivers. And for Iowa, we know what their offense is. They're going to try to take it four yards at a time. That's really hard to do on the road. Really hard to do. See, that's my biggest concern going into the Michigan-Iowa game is pretty much that. Iowa plays mistake-free football. Um, I don't think that Michigan exactly has been playing mistake-free football this year or anywhere near it. So I think that I could easily see a game where the turnover battle, turnover margin really is to separate. Iowa's been great all year with uh, with playing that type of game, controlling the game. And Mich hey, Michigan better figure it out because if they somehow drop this game, things get ugly quickly. Let's go to people. Go to Paul Chesterfield, 97. Hi, Paul. Hey, Mike. What's going on? Talk to me. Hey, uh, I just wanted to touch on the Lions and Dave Ramsey. Uh, I really don't want I really actually don't think we need him. Uh, I think the secondary so far in four games is the strength of our team. And, uh, you know, people don't bring a guy like him in. I mean, he just seems cancerous. And he could just pop off at any minute. And maybe it's, you know, maybe he's not so good for our locker room. You know, I'd much rather see Bob Quinn go out and trade for a guy, like maybe a line, like a third or a fourth round guy for, like, I don't know, like a linebacker or, like, like a Snack Harrison like he did last year to help with the pass rush. And to help get pressure on the quarterback because what do we have like three sacks combined this year or something i mean that's not a problem but i would like to go out and get a guy like that a guy that can help the pass pressure as opposed to the secondary yeah. what are your thoughts no I, and i'm with you I, I whether it's whether beyond his ability it's him showing up to the facility in a brinks truck with a hype man him bitching about the scheme wanting to play all man so he can get all the attention and be the highest paid corner ever says he wants to win team is starting to win he's not there to help them win i believe he's faking an injury for trade leverage i just i don't want any part of it i think if you're a super bowl team you might be able to take the risk and justify it um i don't think this is a super bowl team i think they're developing i think this is a team that's learning how to win i mean look you say there's two instances where they closed opponents out with San Diego and Philly. I'll say there's two instances where you failed to close a game, Arizona and Kansas City. I mean, that that's the reality of the situation. And frankly, you didn't close Philly out. Philly closed themselves out. They dropped the game-winning question. <laughs> dropped seven pass. Ridiculous. But I, I just, I need to see more. I, I don't think you can make a move like that. And sure, we're in the 24-7 content churn where, yeah, the Ringer's got to put a best fit for Ramsey piece out of 3,000 words. And the Lions are one of them. Well, on paper, they are. They play man. They play more man than anybody else. I, I know I'm an ignoramus, but it looked like they were in a ton of man against Kansas City. You know what? Yeah, it makes sense. But they also did it without Darius Slay. Getting Slay back helps them. I don't know that bringing this guy here, how do you know that's a fit? You're just, you're just starting to kind of plant roots that your culture is taking over and that you're tough and you're resilient and you're a, an effort-based football team. Like, Ramsey is a very noisy, distracting, mercurial, mercurial talent. But I, I just, I think it's fantasy. I think if you're the Eagles or the Chiefs and you want to make that move, you can take that risk. Because really, in those two towns right now with those two teams, you don't win the Super Bowl, you fail. And Philly's time is running out, veteran-based roster. Their cap's going to explode. You know, Kansas City, it's the same deal. They only got Mahomes on a deal for maybe the rest of this year. He's going to sign a BOGO extension. They, they have to do. But I don't know that you're there yet. You know, between that and people calling in about Von Miller, I just this 
isn't Madden. Well, that was Kang earlier as well, suggesting that. I know he's very uh, pro Von Miller. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. I want to get the people in the mix. One quick note on what's going on in Minnesota. We'll touch on that. Four forty five cocked and loaded, and then we will get back into the lines. Ninety seven. All right, well, if you've been trying to quit smoking, you're not alone. It takes most people multiple tries to quit. Everyone's different as well. But studies have shown with each quit attempt, you're actually going to learn more about what works for you. And you'll get closer to quitting once and for all. So check out the website, everytrycounts.gov, for more helpful tips, tools, and information that's going to help you on your journey towards quitting once again. The website, check it out. Lots of information. It's everytrycounts.gov. <laughs> Yeah. 